Um, and scanning the body, you're, uh, you had talked about any heav heavy metals and parasites is what Carrie's concern was with. And what we're showing is that, yes, there are um, some heavy metals that she is carrying. And particularly from the foods that she ate, um, she ate a lot of fish um, in this past year as her protein source. And so there does carry a lot of metals within that food. And so we do, like we're showing Carrie that we're going to flush out her system with the toxins. And uh, we do recommend her doing um, some also external, um, external cleansing as well. So what are ways that we can detox ourselves at home? or like anybody listening to this, what could they yeah. do? So like for say, like the, the, the clay, Carrie says the clay that starts with a B, there's the bentonite clay or something that you can do in your bath with baking soda, with uh, Epsom salts, and those will naturally bind your toxins and the metals and start bringing them out of your pores. So you can do a very, and you can add stuff like lemon and fresh grated ginger into those, which will really help with your, your system to open up and purge. Um, we're showing like dry brushing and like um, really getting the circulation system going. Um, we show the, um, like Carrie used to give her farm animals diatomaceous earth and we're showing that that's actually really good for humans and activated charcoal to ingest and it will bind things within the system and parasites and stuff like that so that they naturally will pass um also tons of water tons of water um to put your hands around the water bless the water, send unconditional love and healing to the water and put the intention for the water to help cleanse your body will help, um, do that as well. So what other foods like, uh, contain toxins that we should be aware of? I mean, any processed food within your, your world, the processed food is, I mean, you, I, we don't really show too many avenues unless you have your own farm and you produce your own food that you're not taking in and consuming it. However, when you are resonating at a higher frequency and you're resonating at a more pure like connection to source that you naturally won't, those natural like toxins and stuff won't be able to bind and be within your system. And so you naturally just pass them through. If that makes sense, the lower vibration you are, the easier it is for those parasites, for those heavy metals, for those toxins to stay within your system. But the higher vibration you are within your, um, all of your senses, your chakras, your, your soul that you naturally will pass those through. So we actually had a couple questions around food and diet. Um, so the first one was how to help someone who is sick, who doesn't align with the belief of naturopathy diet and herb healing. So that one's a hard one because you naturally want to help others. And you can't change anyone's beliefs. You can't change anyone's way of being. What you can do is be authentic in who you are and to remain in those lifestyle characteristics that you are. And if that aligns with what you're saying, the naturopathic way of living, that person will either take it or leave it. And the only thing you can do is be authentic to yourself and hold space and love that when, if they do want to then see how you're so healthy and understand how you do it, that then you have held that space and love to be able to give them your knowledge and information, but that's their experience that they want to experience and you can't change anybody. So what other tips do you have on diet and herb healing, regenerative detoxification? 
So what we have is if it's of the earth and especially if it's as organic harvested as possible, um, that we rec recommend doing it and utilizing the energy of the earth. And um, as far as regenerative, can you explain that one? What were you specifically saying? Um, it just says tips on herb healing or regenerative detoxification. We're not quite too sure what the regenerative detoxification quite means. Um, but we're saying that the herb healing is very beneficial. If it's the, if it's provided here and you're able to harvest it here on earth, that it was meant as a healer and a teacher for you, but you have the power in all aspects to utilize your mind to heal, um, as well. So we suggest that you visualize in your mind's eye what you want to see and you start feeling like as if you're already healed and that is the best way to work in combination with the organic harvested materials in able in order to be able to help heal yourself and regenerate cells why is the water that we drink so important is the water makes up a large percentage of your body and the cells within your soul, within your body, need that water to live. You don't need food to survive, but you do need water. And the transmission and of the frequencies are easier carried and to sustain at a higher frequency when you have more water there. It's, it's just water vibrates and carries sound and frequency a lot easier. Um, but the sourcing of the water that you get is important too. Um, you know, if you're not able to source from a local spring or from a, a higher frequency water, then we suggest every time that you wrap your hands around it, you put the intention for healing and unconditional love because the water will carry that vibration that's consumed within your body that will help align those things. Is there anything else that you want to tell us about like the toxins in food, about how the body is able to get rid of these toxins? The less your body stops worrying about stress and stops worrying about all these fight or flight responses within your reality, once you start to quiet the mind, meditate, be able to be in the here and now, your body is built to be a natural recovering system, which means that it is naturally meant to be able to navigate and has been genetically, um, genetically evolved. The evolution of the body has evolved with the earth where it is so that it can naturally re regenerate and fight these things. However, when your body is consuming more food, when it's spending more time digesting, when it's spending more time stressing, when it's spending more time with all of those neuropathic way problems of stress and all those things, it doesn't have time to do the housekeeping and maintenance that it would do on a normal day-to-day -day basis. That's why they suggest fasting within the spiritual community is that it's, it's good for the mind to also reset, but it's also a way for your cells to have time off from doing all those other distracting things and be able to self care. So the more and more that you're able to silent, get into that still place, get into the here and now and be of a higher vibration, then your body naturally is built and has all of the mechanics, the components within it to be able to fight off the toxins. So you said that we need water, but we don't need food. Could you explain that more? Yes, you can survive in this reality without food. Um, and you would have to be of a very high vibration and able to do it. But it'd be very little food. Um, you can survive off of the source of the sun. However, it's all to do with as well as 
just actually doing it, you have to have the belief that you won't, that you will be able to survive. So if you have a belief that you're going to do this and it's going to kill you, then your belief will be your reality. So this is like what breatharians practice. This is why they can go so long without eating. Yes, because the energy is all around you. It's just a matter of tapping into the energy to be able to sustain. You're just taught to be chewers when you guys like being chewers, which is fine. It's an experience and you can't, you know, you're not going to go in other dimensions and be able to chew the way you do there. So we're not saying anything about that. What we're saying is, that you are able to do it. But if you don't believe you can, like the breatharians, they have the belief and they have the trust that they are going to be able to survive and they have, they're tapped into their bodies. If your body is intuitively saying, this is what I need. And they then consume whatever nutrition they need at that time. And then don't for some type of period, then they're also tapped into their body's needs. It's not like it's 12 o'clock at lunchtime type of thing. It's like, what does my body need asking it? Why does it need it? Why is it asking for that craving? Is it really something it needs? Or is it like my subconscious programming that I'm told to chew at this time? And so therefore I will chew. Um, that is. They teach you with the days of the, the times of the days when to eat, they've taught you and put you on a program. And that program has only been to sustain a workforce. They only tell you to eat those times of the day because they want you to be in the programming and it's substantial for them to have workers. So why have we been conditioned to overeat so much? Well, don't you have to buy their food if you're eating? Aren't you too busy to eat that your body is not naturally regenerating and not naturally fighting off the toxins? I mean, we do not want to lower the vibration of this transmission, but there are systems that have been put in place to enslave you guys. And so that is the point that you're at, that this is now time to empower yourself, to become more in tune with your bodies, to become more in tune and aligned within your souls, with your soul frequencies, so that you no longer are on automatic driving. You no longer are just taking like, oh yeah, okay, they told me to eat now, so I'm going to eat. Well, are you hungry? I don't know if I'm hungry. Like, I'm going to eat. They told me to eat. So it's a, we're calling the like showing Carrie like Pavlov's dog or something when they ring the bell and the dog comes because it thinks it's going to get a treat. It's just, they've, tr they've trained your brain. So it's now breaking free of the patterns within the limits of that to know that you are limitless and you are that powerful. So for someone like just waking up that wants to start changing their beliefs around food, where is like the most basic place that they could start? Um, to when they go to grab that food, to sit with themselves for a second and ask their body if the body really wants that. To tune in with the body. That's an easy, easy way. Check with the body and and to maybe say like, okay, if I'm craving some red, red things. Like am I craving strawberries or tomatoes? They're giving carry, for example, like, why am I craving those things? What is the body lacking that it needs? Ask that. Maybe it's a supplement. Maybe it's a shocker needs to be worked with. Maybe there's some trauma that's there that they need, that they're going to get support for and that you could check in with the body and ask it and then look at the trigger and release it. Or maybe the body just wants red, but at least you're still tuning in with your body at that moment. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I'm just reading one more question. Okay. Okay. Um. So, like, there's a lot of different food information out there. So, why? Um. This question says, "Why have I heard sessions recommend different diets to specific people?" Is that their own bias speaking? Well, yes and no. There is science behind it. But we encourage you, the more and more you're in tune with your own body, the more and more you start checking in with your own body and asking it why it needs this, what it 
that you're not like, you're going to naturally follow the, for lack of better words, blueprint of what your needs are. So anytime you're looking for an outside source, that source may be scientifically have a general understanding and it works for most. But the whole point of where you're at right now in your ascension is to stop listening to other people, is to start tuning in with yourself, to start checking in with your guides, to start aligning with your higher self because you know exactly what you need for your body. You're just not listening. You know exactly what you need to navigate the world. You're just not listening. And so right now to go to the fifth dimension is for you guys to be in this transition time to stop using crutches, to stop relying on outside sources, to start trusting self, to start aligning with self and what the self needs. Because your body already knows, your higher self already knows. And on some level, you already know. It's just that you're not listening. Beautiful. So when we go to like the a fifth dimensional consciousness, um, will we need to eat at all? No, you will out of habit though. You'll Eventually. eat. Eventually you'll evolve to not eating. You guys will eat out of habit. You guys will still like start to go to stores and you'll still go to stores to get your food until you realize how to manifest. And then you'll realize you can manifest, but the manifestation of the food is a transition to realize that you didn't need the food in the first place. And so you, you no longer need to manifest the food. <laughs> so the manifestation of the food becomes a segue to really you realizing you don't need to eat. You'll be of a crystalline structure. And so the energies will be what feeds your cells. So I know last, um, in one of our last videos, we were really talking about like health and disease. I did just have a few people ask, um, like, what is the reasoning for herpes? Like we're showing the herpes is the body's fighting itself. Um, did you introduce a foreign body that uh, wasn't in the same vibration, but really it's that the body's fighting itself. And so what we would assume is that you'd need to like, we're showing like meditation out in the sun, you get vitamin D and we're showing to just support the immune system, meditate, ask for your guides to support your immune system. Fasting is really good for that. Um, in keeping the distractions away from your, your body body having to do other things so that it can fight the the issue perfect so i do have a few other questions did you have anything else that you wanted to say about diet nothing more about diet just about even if you um if you consume meat, we don't have judgment and the, uh, the consumers of meat, like the, the animals that came into this lifetime to, they knew their contract of the life that they're going to have. And usually those are higher frequency beings that come and just want to experience a little bit of earth. But they can still hold a higher frequency, knowing the density of the industry that they're going to incarnate into. And just honor that life. Uh, like, like religions, when they pray over the food, what they're doing is they're, they're raising the frequency of the food. When you honor the life, when you give gratitude for the life that's sacrificed, that naturally heightens the density of the meat that you're going to consume. And it naturally, the honor that you give to the life actually gives back the gratitude for the higher dimensional being that knew they were coming into a dense industry to sacrifice their lives for your energy consumption. 
And so by you're raising the frequency of their experience by honoring them and taking the moment to do that, but then you would realize how powerful you are that when you put your hands around anything you're consuming and you bless it and you honor it and you send it gratitude that you are raising that frequency that now you're consuming. So um, we just, you know, we know that the, through Carrie's experience that the whole vegan, vegetarian, meat eater world is very divided right now within the spiritual community. And what we're saying is there is still a way to consume that will send honor and gratitude and that those beings did know that they, that what they were coming into, they didn't come into those lives, not knowing their life um, and what their purpose would be. So, you know, are, do you be a moderate steward and try to be as conscientious of the products that you're purchasing and what you're supporting and how much you're consuming? Absolutely. You do that in, in life in general, but we also say that honor the food, give, give meaning to that life that came for your, your, uh, your energy. So we talked about like detoxifying the physical body. What are ways that we can detoxify and cleanse our energy body? So like what you started at the beginning with the body scan through BQH sessions is a great way um, to detoxify the energy body, but also you can imagine and go through each chakra and to ask the chakra what it needs, what's, what's going on. And that can help detoxify the spiritual body. And you can ask, are there any attachments? Is there anything I need to know? Is there any cords that we need to cut, anything like that. You can do that. Um, and just, you can imagine your spiritual body and just kind of like rain cleansing it is also a really good way, but you want to make sure you tuck underneath too, because you forget about like the bottom part. Um, but mainly when your triggers come up in life and you are having a learning, a teachable moment, is to however best you can come back to unconditional love and forgiveness for whatever that moment is, processing it, not repressing it, that that is also your teacher at that moment to, that is cleansing the energetic body is by doing your inner work. So lately, the last few days, something that has came up for me is to like the importance of cleansing our subconscious mind. What does it mean to cleanse the subconscious? means any automated autopilot uh, beliefs or actions that you take to, you want to reset that. So you look at your patterns, you look at your, the way that you're operating and the daily things that you do. Is this automated or am I being in the moment, right? Like, so the more and more you check in with yourself, like, am I doing this in the here now? Or am I doing it because like we said earlier, it's 12 o'clock and it's time to eat. Like you want to look at those automated subconscious um, things that you do. And when you check in with them, you acknowledge them and you realize you're making a choice to be the, the creator, that that will help cleanse that. So we did have another question that I was actually... Um, kind of curious about so what are some what is evidence in our physical reality that reptilians exist <laughs> like people want like because we don't see them so it's like is there physical evidence in this reality that they are here well, I mean they're here <laughs> the physical evidence I mean I mean, you, whoever asked this question has probably seen evidence of a reptilian, but they don't trust their discernment and their own intuition of if it's a false nature, if it's fabricated or if it's real. And so what we're saying to that person is they probably already saw evidence, but they didn't check in with their intuition to see and to check in with themselves because they are all knowing if something is of false or re like real, you know? They're the best deciders of that. So there is evidence all around whether or not you choose to check in with your discernment to be able to navigate through the accuracy of that evidence. 
we'd say you need to check in with yourself. So the next question is, I've heard multiple aliens have intervened genetically in making humans. How specifically did they do this? How did they tamper with the DNA to genetically make humans? Yes. So are they wanting to know the first human or the like human uh, humans that you have at this point? So let's talk about like the evolution of the human species. So what aliens, first of all, are a part of the human DNA and then how were they genetically modified to create the human being that we have now? Well, the Pleiadians are the main creators of the genetic human DNA that originated originally. They did use, uh, they when cre creating the human experiment, they did work with other collectives and there are modifications and tweaks from those collectives. However, it's not predominantly the DNA that uh, humanity had it starting off on earth. However, yes, there were other collectives that came in and they did interbreed with that human collective, the original source human collective. And then they have created and modified this humanity that we have now and there are also like we're showing carrie there are also like you might not want to hear it but there are also parts of the reptilian within your brain that you have and that how you operate um however they're not genetically fused with you in a way but they from being surrounded by using your free choice being surrounded by the reptilians and you guys started to develop that part of your brain. It was almost like by symbiosis, by being next to the reptilians and making the same choices as the reptilians in your free will that you had access like in, and got a part of your brain that was reptilian. Is and this what we call like the reptilian brain? Is it like our fight and flight? Yes. And you got that through the evolution, but it wasn't necessarily that you were genetically modified with a reptilian. It was that you started to operate because the brain re rewires itself constantly in the circuitry constantly within the cells of the brain. And so by free will acting like a reptilian, if you will, a lower vibrational reptilian and to making those free will choices that then you activated that reptilian part of your brain. And the more and more you evolve now, you're rewiring the brain so that that reptilian part that was operating and dominating the brain so much in the activities that you were choosing, now that part is now rewired and that doesn't exist within your evolution of the human brain that's actually moving forward and it will not be re- like we're saying like the next generations because you're evolving to a higher consciousness won't have that part of the reptilian brain when they're born. So we, I know me and you were talking before this about how ISIS gave birth to the homo sapien sapien that we have now. So how did they do this and how was she able to give birth to a human being? Because uh, to my understanding, she was Syrian. Well, you can't, I mean, the concepts in which and how these, like uh, reproducing is very easy for us. The higher dimensions, we understand it. It's easy. It's science. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and you're collective like humanities collective is getting more advanced within their science of like um, dealing with this type of genetic science so we just you can easily remove um, you can easily remove like a human egg is what we're showing Carrie and inseminate it into a perfect environment that can grow that egg and it can thrive so it necessarily wasn't her DNA. We're showing it was a human egg with a her species of the sperm. So that was inseminated into her body and therefore she was able to house those. So 
that's how it happened. It's really easy. So I guess the other part of the question was, uh, where was this done at? Like, was it done on their spaceships? Was it done on Earth? Well, part of their like homes that they had when they inhabited here were down here and they were their ships on land that they lived in, if that makes sense. So they looked more like homes, but we're showing here it was in a pyramid um, that like the, the pyramid that it was used for creating, for doing this process. Amazing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, um, what are the best frequencies to use for music and geometry based off of the 180, 360, 540, 720 um, scale? And why do they all equal nine? Okay, so this is something... Um, we do have a good guide to be able to guide you, but we also want you to tune into yourself. When you listen to something, is it of higher vibration? Does it make you want to create? Does it make you want to dance? Did you tune in with yourself to see how that actually makes you feel? There are things that are labeled these accurate frequencies that are not these accurate frequencies and they are a false nature. But if we continue to where you're at in humanity right now to, to continue to lead you to check in with yourself, to see what's of resonance for you, you will automatically be able to answer that for yourself. And you won't have to look for an outside source because you are that powerful. We believe that you are that powerful because you are, and we see it and we know it. So when you listen to a frequency, whatever you want that frequency to help you enhance do ask that question, hold that vibration. And then when you listen to something, does that help you? Does that make you feel like doing that or does that not? And so what we really want to do is redirect you to check in with yourself and why everything equals to the number nine as we're showing that carry the sacred number of three. Three is a sacred number within all the sacred geometry and nine is a uh, like triple threes. And so that becomes even another, even more powerful trinity of sacred numbers. And um, we don't know how more we can answer that question. So is love like the frequency of love represented by the nine? Because it's like the trinity times the trinity. <laughs> Not just love, it's unconditional love. Like we, the, the old Eros love is like an egotistical love. Like I love you because it makes me feel better. Uh, unconditional love is because I love myself and therefore I love everything. Perfect. So, um, we also had the question, <sighs> What kind of events can we expect to see in the near future? Um, and what can we do to get through this time as smooth as possible? Well, we've spoke about the events that are coming. Um, we're showing Carrie, like right now, there's like a big dust storm, almost like, like a mushroom cloud of something, um, like billowing, like fire, maybe if like a fire cloud or um, but we're showing Carrie that the events are going to become, you might have a lot of the repeating events that you've experienced in the past couple of years that you've all experienced. And like, we're showing Carrie, she's experienced several wildfires that she had to evacuate from the past couple of years. There are going to be more and more events kind of like that happening, natural disasters, um, you know. Like we are showing there is a possibility for the, the main timeline for there to be another uh, shutdown, if you will. And But we're showing here you guys had the trial run before. You got to get out your primitive feelings about it then. You got to kind of experience it, realize that it wasn't so bad, that you guys all made it through. So this time that you go through it, you're going to know, well, we made it through. 
But now it's more of an empowering thing. Like, how do I choose with my free will to make it through? Am I going to thrive or am I going to survive this time? And so that's what the coming together, the empowerment, the standing together, the uh, working together as communities, the saying no as a unified voice, all those things are so important now because you realize you got through it before. That was your trial run. Woohoo! It was scary at the time. You guys all didn't know what to expect at the end of the tunnel. But now that you've done that, it's like now we're like, okay, apply all the lessons that you've learned through all this time of your awakening and becoming more powerful. And now you get to navigate it in more of an empowering way. And that's what you realize is like, once you realize you're God incarnate having an experience, you now get to determine the outcome of how that's going to happen. Is it going to be one where you're just going to thrive and kick ass through it? Or are you going to succumb to the will of, you know, the lower vibrations? Why do these events keep repeating themselves? Because humanity hasn't learned the lesson. They haven't learned to walk through it with empowerment, with unconditional love. So what are, or what are the best ways that we can help our community? Best thing that you can do right now is your inner work. Um, you, you need to be doing anything that triggers you. You need to be looking at and sending compassion, love, understanding, releasing, alchemizing that energy, because the stronger you are right now, you need to be getting to the place where you, all those lower vibrational 3D things aren't anchoring you here any longer. Those are lower vibration energies that we want. We're showing you because it's a gift for you to release so that you're no longer grounded in that energy. It's like a weight. It's like you're in the water and you have this anchor tied to your, you know, chained to your feet. And it's what that anchor holds are all those lower level dimensional things that you don't need to hold on to anymore. And the minute you're able to alchemize them and do your inner work is that it'll release you and you can float and you can move around and you can swim, you can have fun, you can do somersaults in the water and you can enjoy and you can be lifted up. And then when you're at that point, you're at the best for humanity because you're, a, you're able to help them. How can you help them when you have an anchor around your ankles? Like you want to go and help somebody else? You are, you are chained to that ground of that ocean floor. How are you going to even do that? So speaking of the ocean floor, <laughs> we have another question of, um, there are many arc ships in the oceans left by the theater races that are starting to activate all around the world. There are beings in stasis. Some have awakened. Will these ships come to the surface? Millions of beings live in these ships. So I guess like um, during this awake, this like great awakening, are the beings from the bottom of the ocean going to come to the surface? Uh, you may see, you're not going to see it on a big level like that um, because it would cause too much fear. What they're here to do is to anchor in frequencies and they're also observing and monitoring the collective of humanity while staying out of the way for non-intervention. So those are already activated as far as they're holding a frequency that is helping to, we're able to send directly. Now this is not Carrie's collective. This is not the Octarian collective that's doing this. So we're speaking on behalf of the information that we have. And so we're not we're acknowledging that we're not going into their archive of disrespecting any information they may not release. We're giving you general information. And so in doing so, they're mainly there to activate and hold frequencies for the planet Earth for the ascension because it'll help and it'll help so that density can no longer like the higher frequency, the density can no longer stay in that place. So what it's helping to do is the separations to, between the third and the fifth dimension. And you, you will see like scout ships and everything like that. But once the event of the great separation happens, they will then leave those areas that, where they're anchored, but you're not going to see them leave. They're going to, they're going to do it interdimensionally. Um, like when they fly or quote unquote, they don't necessarily have to move space and time where you actually see them move in the air, like a plane, they can actually bend the space and time so that they move from one point to another by just changing their frequency. So you don't, 
a lot of times when you see ships, most of the time it's because they want to be seen. That's not how they normally travel. They don't normally travel where you have to watch them in a linear line. Like they normally travel. They just, it's like going from one radio station to another. So how come then we can see so many ships in the sky right now? Because they want to be seen. Because that's the only way you're not going to be afraid of them when galactic uh, citizenship opens up. Why are so many star seeds having dreams about spaceships? They're probably doing work in the quantum um, in their sleep time on a ship. They could be seeing the future of where they're going to be going. They're going to be heading back to a ship to do their work. Um, they could be looking at ulterior timelines. There's many reasons, but a lot of times it's because they're working on the ships in their um, non-human state. Do you have any final messages for the collective today? Um, our final messages are that we're the transmissions that we may have in the future may be more and more blunt, but it's because we know that you're that strong and we want to empower you all. And we love you unconditionally and we're here cheering you on. But right now, this is the test and the challenge that the main collective is going through is to realize that they are God and to realize their strength and their power. And that is helping prepare you for the fifth dimension because that'll be a way of operating. You're not going to have to look for outside sources to be able to manifest what you want to have the reality that you want. You're going to realize that that all lies within yourself. And so we love you all. We know you can do it. We are here for you and, you know, we're cheering you on, but you're strong. Just remember how strong you are. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome.